In this episode of Travelogue, we have a hot date with the colourful Yi people, a fire-worshipping ethnic group living among the mountains of Liangshan. Join us for shaman rituals, traditional spectator events, a sit-down family meal and some cultural pyromania. Hello and welcome to Travelogue in China. Are you ready for an adventure? Well, if you are, my name is Min Zui Li, you can call me Zui, and I'm going to take you off the beaten track here in southwest China, in the Daliang Mountains. Now, these slopes are inhabited by the ethnic Yi minority, who have a deep affinity with fire and also have been worshipping it for thousands of years. Now, we're going to find out more about the Yi people's way of life and also celebrate with them the Torch Festival, which is when this place comes ablaze with fun and frivolity once a year. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go! And so we head to Liangshan in the south of Sichuan province and we're beginning our journey in Puga County. Here we're deep among the Daliang or Great Cool Mountains. This vast range with the highest peak rising above 4,000 meters extends across the border between the provinces of Sichuan and Yunnan. Liangshan is officially Liangshan Yi Autonomous Prefecture, home to the largest population of Yi people in China and to some of the finest works of Mother Nature. The Yi people are one of the country's 55 ethnic minorities and the vast majority of China's 8.7 million Yi people live scattered across mountainous regions at high altitudes. Once a year, Yi communities gather together to pay their respects to one of the most important elements of their culture, fire. Torch Festival is held around the 24th day of the sixth lunar month, usually sometime in August. And the festival is said to have originated not too far from where I am now. It seems I need to get myself some better directions though, because this place is too much steam and not enough fire for what I'm looking for. But hey, I can still enjoy the scenery. Well, legend has it that the Yi People's Torch Festival was born somewhere among the mountains of Puga County. And in my search for its birthplace, well, I've stumbled across this rather magnificent area. It's actually a hot spring waterfall that apparently spits out the most volume of water for a hot spring in the world. It's pretty magnificent, isn't it? I'm somewhere up on Mount Lorchi, known for its crystalline waterfalls, rich vegetation, and secluded caves. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Any narrower and I would have to abort mission and get emergency services to extract me. Anyway, finding this birthplace isn't as easy as I thought it would be. This hot spring resort, known as Jiu Su Jiu Li, on 99 miles, is the main attraction on Mount Luoji. The water is 40 degrees Celsius and the view gorgeous all year round. Holy moly! This would better be a sturdy structure! What a lookout! You know, if I wasn't on a mission, I'd probably spend all day here soaking in the water. And uh, I've heard that it's 100% natural and even drinkable, so I'd lap it all up. But that's for another, more relaxing travelogue show, because my task is to find the physical source of Torch Festival. And I never back down from a challenge. So, onwards and upwards, deep into the wilderness of Liangshan, to find where the fiery tale began thousands of years ago. Four hours and goodness knows how many steps later, I come across a bunch of cheeky Yi children playing on the soft green foothills of Mount Lorji. The two older girls, cousins Ruzuo and Zhizuo, 13 and 15 respectively, tell me this is a sacred place. So I must be close. Okay. 
Kurudu Disa. In the Yi language, it means grassland with plentiful water and fire. Here, the Rudu, the nourishing source of life, takes the form of babbling brooks gently carving through fertile land. Then, there's the Disa, fire, the fiercest element, bringing warmth and light. And here, I found Rudu Disa, not only the birthplace of Torch Festival, but also, so some people believe, the birthplace of the Yi people. Apparently, we can even get to the very spot where the first fire originated. And so, another hour later, I reached a cavern which, according to Yi legend, thousands of years ago burst into flames. And suddenly, I notice we're not alone. I feel like I've entered another world. Something very curious is going on. And there's definitely the smell of smoke. The shaman is known as a Bimo in the Yi language. I'm lucky enough to run into this Bimo, and luckier still, to be invited to his home. In recent times, many Yi families have packed up their remote, rural mountainside homes and relocated to urbanized areas. Ji Ke Shanying's family did exactly that. A Bimo is one of the most important figures in Yi society. Bimo are masters of the Yi language and scriptures and officiate at births, weddings, funerals and celebrations. They also carry out rituals that play a major role in daily Yi life, such as blessings, healings, divinations and exorcisms. In performing their duties, Bimo have at the disposal a rather extraordinary set of trade tools. Definitely it's hardly surprising, considering that Bimo in the Yi language means master of scriptures. Bimo scriptures are priceless ancient texts which record Yi customs and traditions and spell out ceremonial mantras. Here, it's not a rare sight to see Bimo consulting such scrolls in the street. Well, Chinese characters are still a struggle for me, so I won't even try with these cryptic little pictographs. This is a Yi-Zu's word, right? Yes, it's a Yi-Zu's word. 
啊，其实要我鬼怪，他在就是用这一本书，就是用的这一本书，不改。Completely unintelligible to me, but so beautifully lyrical. It's captivating. I'm shown more hallowed objects, a monkey skull, a sacred dagger, all fueling my intrigue with the Yi. Bimo today are regarded as ambassadors and influential disseminators of Yi culture. And from what I've seen and experienced so far, it's certainly a culture I'd hope continues to thrive, especially here on the slopes of the Daliang Mountains. Coming up next, my Yi friend and beauty contestant Suga introduces me to daytime torch festival frivolities and invites me over for a fun-filled Torch Festival family dinner. It's the day of the Yi Torch Festival in the town of Luoqishan, and lucky me again, I get to spend it with a local friend I've made, who just happens to be taking part in the beauty contest later in the day. The girls are putting on their most treasured traditional outfits while a huge crowd gathers in the makeshift arena set amidst the emerald mountains of Liangshan. The scale of it is beyond anything I could have imagined for this relatively isolated part of China. It's the perfect weather for a festival too, sunny and warm, but not too warm. So the plush embroidered layers that Zuga is wearing are still comfortable enough. I can't say if the weight of the outfit is comfortable, though. Got some pretty elaborate silver jewellery. Built up some great neck muscles wearing this epic necklace. Wow. Oh, the really thick earrings. <laughs> My ears just. <laughs> it's an exquisite ensemble, and I can see why Tsuga has her aunt helping out. It's not the easiest thing to slip into. I do love how casual the setting is, though. No tents or mirrors. Just getting ready out here on a bit of flat land. There's no strict time schedule of events either. We hear that the beauty contest is sometime after the opening parade, of course, and also after some horse racing. So it's best to be prepared. And these ladies are extra prepared. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm glad it's just a hat and not an entire outfit, because the overall combination is slightly unconventional. But hey, the colours kind of match, right? <laughs> what do you reckon? Well, I've been mistaken for a Yi woman many times already, so this totally authenticates my Yi identity. <laughs> she looks so glamorous next to me. I look like I've just come out of a <laughs> a farm chopping wood. This is a vast improvement on my uh, appearance, though, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, we're appropriately clothed now, so it's time to join the crowds. Yi Torch Festival is celebrated on different days in different areas, but all around the same day. Many believe that its origins lie in the early veneration of fire, when the ancient Yi discovered that flames could protect the crops by repelling locusts. During the daytime, Communities host large-scale spectator events like wrestling, cockfighting, bullfighting, and horse racing. This is absolutely nothing like going to the races back home. Even though I do have my best race day hat on, it's delightfully rustic with minimal fuss. I mean, the jockeys don't even have saddles, just reins. And then finally, it's Suga's time to shine. She's second in line. Can you spot her? Just. Meantime, it looks like I'll have to battle the hordes of people rushing over to the spot where the judges are. There's no stage, let alone signs, telling me where to go. 
I just have to follow the pack and yellow umbrellas. Don't worry, I'm not competing. <laughs> Looks like the judges are pretty busy right now. Um, I've got to admit, the uh, competition's quite tough, but I'm sure Zuga's got it. These beauty contestants are judged on a pretty face, of course. Um, that always helps. But also, uh, they're judged on their outfits, so the more bling things that are, they have to be able to afford that. And also, they're judged on the, the character. So, of course, I think Zuga's going to be the absolute winner. Number one, what's Zuga? All right. I have to admit, I find these silver chandelier headdresses quite charming. But now I've lost Suga in the surging throngs of people armed with their mobile phone cameras. Well, you have to agree that these stunning Yi ladies in the stunning Yi outfits are very photogenic. It's crazy, colourful chaos out here. But I managed to find a vantage point to take a few shots of my own before being booted back into the crowd. Oh, there's Suga standing diagonally across from us but that's the closest we can get. So, Suga didn't end up taking the crown this time, but that doesn't put a dampener on her day. Anyway, the most important part of Torch Festival is what comes next, dinner with the family. And lucky me, again. She's invited me over to her aunt's home in a typical tiny Yi village. Unlike the Beemore's home we visited earlier, these rural dwellings are more traditional. This is the living slash dining room of Zuga's aunt and uncle's home. Zuga is 25 and works as a teacher at the downtown primary school. But it's too much of a long and winding bus ride to get to work every day, so she stays in the dormitory there. She'd never miss Torch Festival dinner with family though. So, here we are. It just so happens her grandfather is also a Bimo, so he prays for the family by blessing their property, like this chicken. Then, I follow the ladies to the kitchen, while Zuga's uncle takes the chook outside. I suspect it's going to be slaughtered for the meal. Meat is scarce and only eaten on special occasions. And there aren't many occasions on the Yi calendar more special than today. The kitchen is dark and incredibly cramped, but somehow, three generations plus me still fit in there. As usual, I'm useless though, so I just stand and gawp. The Yi are the sixth largest ethnic minority in China. Of the 8.7 million total, there are at least one million Yi here in Liangshan Yi Autonomous Prefecture. Most still live in humble hamlets like this one, many scraping a living by farming and taking up jobs like woodwork in the agricultural off-season, or selling crafts like embroidery and silver accessories. The Yi diet varies according to the region and climate, but generally maize, buckwheat, corn and potatoes are staples, as they grow well at high altitude. Historically, boiled potatoes weren't something everyone could afford, but the socio-economic circumstances have improved over the past decades for the Yi. And, right now, hot potatoes are being served as an appetizer while the chicken is being prepared. And boy, does it smell good. Traditionally, during Torch Festival, Yi families will eat together around the fire, as fire is central to Yi belief. Tonight, however, Zuga's family are bringing out a table for me, wanting me to feel as at home as possible. This is their equivalent of a Christmas dinner, so I'm really touched by the gesture. It's moments like these when I truly love my job. These are the experiences I'll never forget, surrounded by human warmth and the simple joy of family belonging. I'm so lucky indeed.
你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是你是
and boo the creature when it comes charging, it'll be okay. Mmm, sure. Great safety tip. But then again, maybe it works. I've got to say, it's not my thing for sure, but it's been part of Yi culture for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Audience is happy. Soon enough, the sun sets, which means one thing, the torch part of Torch Festival. Back at the big Pulga County celebrations, the stadium stands have emptied and people are filling the field, setting tinder and lanterns ablaze. Using the power of fire, locals remember their ancestors and pray for the present, wishing for all things positive in the year to come. Ye people believe that fire drives out evil. And as the night descends into a pyromaniac's dream, there are only good vibes going around. And yep, that is me. And that's my hat making one last appearance. I've also managed to shimmy into a traditional Yi dress. Too bad everyone went home before this to change back into everyday clothes. It makes sense though. No girl wants the most valuable outfit to catch fire. Silly. Well, this is it. This is the key moment of the Torch Festival. Setting this fire on fire. Woo! It takes a while to get the main bonfire started. But in the meantime, it's all about the Yi community. Celebrating Yi tradition and religion. Worshipping fire and dancing the evening away. It's an indescribable feeling surrounded by thousands of Yi brothers and sisters during one of the most hallowed times of the year. It's a carnival of colour and kinship, a fiery tale of Yi culture spanning past, present and future.